Hey, I had this idea about how sad and unlucky my sister is. I've got the perfect plan. What kind of plan? Just watch closely. Mary put on a fancy wedding dress, the kind you would wear to a wedding. She walked over to the microphone. When she got it, she turned to the guests and said confidently, Would anyone like to take my sister off our hands? She's not very educated and she's getting old, isn't she? After she said this, Mary looked at her sister with a smug, mean smile, but she didn't realize how rude her actions were. The mood in the room changed quickly. People started whispering, and some guests gave Mary cold looks. Mary didn't notice and grabbed the microphone again. Come on, sister, you need to sell yourself more. There are plenty of handsome doctors here. You really don't understand what you've done, do you? In the next moment, something major and unexpected happened. My name is Amy Schumer, a plain 31-year-old working woman. I don't have any outstanding features except for one unusual fact. After middle school, I pursued a career in law and became a lawyer. I have a sister named Mary who is three years younger than me. She's charming and sociable, so our family always treated her specially. I am not noticeable in appearance, just plain and average in style. I'm not especially charming, so my family and relatives never cherished me much. I hardly felt any affection and was treated coldly at home. I couldn't compete with Mary's natural charm, and she got all of our parents' love. All I received were harsh looks. I worked as hard as I could. I tried my best in my studies, earning good grades, hoping to get some attention from my family but I could never outshine Mary. Eventually, I got tired of trying to win their love and decided to focus on something else. I gave up on being loved and put all my effort into studying. I promised myself that I would find my worth through my knowledge. Studying hard gave me confidence and my efforts led to good results. I hoped that my success in school would one day earn me a word of praise from my parents. Holding on to this faint hope, I stayed up late every night, studying. Throughout middle school, I was always at the top of my class and did better than other students in every test. But even then, my parents never praised me. Instead, they often criticized my grades. It's not just about being at the top, you need to get nearly perfect scores in every subject. Yes, even if you score 98% in science, it's not perfect. But this recent exam was really difficult. I would try to explain. Excuses again. Your insufficient efforts are why you end up with such results, my mother would say sharply. Her voice was as cold as ice. Are you intending to flaunt those less than perfect grades? All I could do was apologize. Yes, I'm sorry, I murmured softly. No matter how much time and effort I invested, my results never matched my parents' idea of perfect. They never acknowledged my efforts. Any score less than 101% was just a reason for them to scold me. But more than my parents' coldness, my sister Mary's seemingly innocent words hurt more. Oh, sister, you're not getting lectured again, are you? She would come into my room without permission and smirk at my report card. Good grades and still scolded. That's sad. I get praise for barely passing. Did you come here just to say that? I asked, feeling frustrated. I was worried maybe you were down again, but I didn't expect such a cold reception, Mary said, pretending to be concerned. If you were really worried, you wouldn't speak to me like that, I replied, trying to keep calm. See, that's your problem. You're always like this, so standoffish. That's why mom and dad don't show you love. Mary said, her gaze cold as ice. She looked down on me with unmistakable contempt. For a brief moment, her attitude was clear even as she left the room. After she was gone, I could hear her cheerful laughter with our parents from the living room. I should have been used to this by now, but the sadness overwhelmed me and tears ran down my cheeks. I had told myself many times that I didn't need my parents' approval and that Mary's words wouldn't affect me. Despite that, my emotions betrayed me, and I cried. In my hand was the crumpled report card, wrinkled from my tight grip. I resolved once again to stand on my own and escape from this stifling family environment. 
I decided that doing well in my studies and improving my abilities was the key to that escape. From that moment, I threw myself into my studies with even more determination. One day, as the autumn breeze swept through the classroom windows, I received an unexpected announcement from my father. Amy, you will not go to high school. You will start looking for a job immediately, he stated coldly. I was at a loss for words, unable to hide my confusion. Why would you say something like that? I asked with a blank expression. Further investment in you is unnecessary. If you want to go to high school, pay for it with your own earnings. If that's impossible, then you have no choice but to give up. But I'm still in middle school. Work opportunities are limited for me. How am I supposed to? My protest fell on deaf ears. Then you must accept this. After discussing it with your mother, we've decided to focus our finances on Mary. We can't afford to spend more on you, he declared firmly. That's not fair, I screamed internally, but my father's decision was final. His abrupt words seemed to drain all the color from the world around me, painting everything in shades of gray. My mother and sister looked at me with unhidden smiles, enjoying my misery. I understand much more now. There were options like finding schools with tuition waivers or scholarships. However, back then, without knowing how to access that information, I was simply devastated by the closure of my path to further education. Since that day, my passion for learning faded quickly. The praises for my homeroom teacher, who had always admired my grades, felt hollow, and the lack of interest in education at home made my chances of advancing to higher education seem even more hopeless. I started the next stage of my life by working at a local factory right after graduation. Since I wasn't old enough to live on my own, I stayed with my family until I turned 19. I worked as hard as I could, and most of my salary went to the household. I saved the little money I kept for myself for the future. Those tough days felt like crawling through an endless tunnel. On my 19th birthday, I finally left home. I wrote a single letter for my family and walked away from the place that was now just a memory. My family's reaction was as if I had never existed complete silence, without a single phone call or letter. At first, living apart from my family caused me heartache, and the loneliness cast a shadow over my days. However, as time passed, the loneliness eased with the busyness of work. After moving out and starting an independent life, the stress I had felt at home disappeared, and I began to experience a mental spaciousness I had never felt before. This newfound peace of mind reignited my enthusiasm, I regained my passion for learning, and decided to start studying again. I began with the basics, reviewing them diligently. The joy of learning filled my heart once more. Soon I started to study high school textbooks and began reading extensively. During my reading journey, I became fascinated by books on law, which sparked a deep interest in the legal profession. Despite only having a junior high education, I learned about the preliminary examination system, which allowed someone like me to take the bar exam. With this new information, my dedication to studying intensified. I used every possible moment to study, even during short breaks at work. I memorized legal terms during lunch, always preparing for the bar exam. The people at my workplace, mostly older than me, saw my earnest efforts and supported me. At the age of 24, I passed the bar exam. After passing the exam, I left my long-term job at the factory and secured a position at a top law firm. After about five years of training, I set out on my own and opened my law practice. Now, I happily work as a legal consultant for a hospital. Sometimes I wonder what would happen if I told my parents about becoming a lawyer. I think about how they might react and if I could finally meet their expectations. However, I haven't shared anything with them, and deep down, I believe I won't reach out to them. An unexpected reunion with my family came sooner than I thought. One evening, after finishing work, I found a message on my phone from my younger sister Mary. She was getting married. Mary is getting married, I murmured to myself. My sister, now 29, was engaged to a doctor, 
and her wedding was next month. They wanted me to attend. Despite the long estrangement from Mary and my parents, I couldn't ignore this significant event, so I replied that I would attend. Mary quickly responded with the exact date and location of the ceremony. The message ended with, don't forget the wedding gift, which made me smile wryly. Perhaps Mary was more interested in the gift than in welcoming me. I decided to use the wedding as a chance to reunite with the family, and then part ways again. On the day of Mary's wedding, I put on a carefully selected blue dress and headed to the venue. After completing the entrance formalities, I took my seat in the family area where my father and mother were already seated. You have some nerve showing up here. You must be doing well for yourself with the meager earnings from the factory, my father said coldly. Indeed, you're right. Introducing someone like her as family does not do us any credit as parents, my mother added with disdain. Mary shouldn't have invited someone like you, my father continued. I told them exactly that, but they insisted on getting the celebration money anyway, my mother said quietly, even though I was right there. They carried on this conversation without any hesitation. This was the reality I faced. I had a faint hope that sharing my side might bridge the gap between us, but it was quickly shattered. Both my father and mother seemed to completely avoid talking to me. In the silence, I glanced around the venue and noticed some familiar faces among the groom's side. Haven't I seen that person somewhere before? I thought to myself, feeling a sense of deja vu. As I traced my uncertain memory, I looked up the groom's name and my suspicion turned into conviction. The connection I had anticipated became clear. I couldn't entirely hide my faint surprise. Such a coincidence, almost like a twist of fate, I marveled. However, I decided to keep my emotions in check and spend the day quietly. As the ceremony proceeded, the bride and groom made a glamorous entrance. Guests spoke warm words and gave entertaining performances that softened the atmosphere. As time passed, the banquet gradually shifted to dinner and then to photo sessions. Throughout this time, my parents got up without acknowledging me and moved toward the front where the bride and groom awaited. Mary, as if drawn by a magnet, clung close to the bride and groom, smiling happily in every photograph. Pretending not to be affected by the scene unfolding before me, I focused silently on the meal in front of me. Unexpectedly, my sister Mary approached me. She came closer with a smile, but her eyes had a spark of something more than excitement to see her sister after so many years. Big sis, it's been such a long time, hasn't it? Are you happy to spend time together like this? She asked slightly. I nodded quietly and said, Yes, the banquet food is really wonderful. With a sarcastic smile, Mary continued, You can't get such luxurious food at the factory you work at, can you? You should be grateful for this opportunity. Something inside me felt like it was being torn apart, but I didn't show it on my face. Mary's words became sharper, tauntingly piercing me. Oh dear, did I upset you? I'm sorry, but it's natural for you to be envious, isn't it? Your little sister marrying a doctor and all. Mary said the words, I'm sorry, flippantly, as if they were meaningless. I kept my expression unchanged and quietly waited for my next move. At that moment, Mary whispered in my ear, Big sis, because I feel sorry for you, I've come up with a great idea. Despite trying to stay calm, I asked with suspicion, A great idea. What is it? Mary, looking satisfied, said, You'll see. Just watch closely. Wearing her elegant wedding dress, Mary gathered everyone's attention. She took a microphone from the staff and suddenly announced loudly to the guests, Ladies and gentlemen, you may not be aware, but my sister is here. She may not have the highest education or be the youngest, but if there is anyone kind-hearted enough, could you please take her under your wing? My face turned red. What are you saying, Mary? I exclaimed. Mary continued even louder. Although she doesn't earn much and leads a modest life, is there someone here who can brighten my sister's future? As everyone focused on me, Mary seemed to enjoy my discomfort with a smug smile. At that moment, a shocking scene unfolded. 
Mary's rude behavior escalated, and even our normally gentle parents joined in. Please treat her kindly, my parents added. This was the last straw for me. Rage swirled within me. To ridicule someone so much at a happy event, how far would they go? I couldn't believe it. But now, it was time for them to face reality. As the atmosphere shifted and murmurs spread through the venue, Mary, unaware she was the center of attention, cheerfully called out, Amy, look, there are so many doctors here. It's your chance. I stayed silent but conveyed my strong will through my somber gaze. This is the end for you. Confused, Mary responded, eh. I continued more calmly. You'll understand soon just how terrible your actions have been. Just as Mary tried to make an excuse, the groom suddenly raised his voice. Wait, please. Why are you leaving your seats? The venue was riveted by his voice. Looking toward the groom, it was clear all his colleagues from work were standing up, heading for the exit. Even as the groom tried to stop them, a dignified man, who appeared to be the hospital director, spoke to the groom with determination. The recent remarks of the bride were so unpleasant that I'm in disbelief. I apologize, but we can no longer stay here. We will take our leave now, the hospital director said. The groom hurried to stop him, offering to take responsibility for Mary's words and actions. Please wait, I admit her words were inappropriate. I'll speak to her directly and ensure she changes her behavior. However, the hospital director pointed out the gravity of the issue and revealed something the groom didn't know. The problem isn't just that. Do you not know what kind of person her sister is? The groom, confused, admitted, No, I only met her sister for the first time today. All I've heard is that she worked in a factory after graduating from middle school. The hospital director couldn't hide his irritation. Don't be ridiculous. Her sister is a respected lawyer and serves as the legal advisor to our hospital. The groom was shocked to learn this, indicating he had no idea I was the hospital's legal advisor. Mary and my parents were also speechless. I was the legal advisor of the hospital where Mary's fee and K worked. I had seen him several times at hospital events, which is why he looked familiar. The other guests probably realized this too. Mary's inappropriate comments only made things worse, and that's why the hospital director was so outraged. Although the groom himself had no direct relation to me, the hospital director and staff valued the legal advisor highly. The groom's face turned red, and he stepped toward Mary, raising his voice. What on earth is this? Because of your carelessness, my reputation is now tarnished. Mary stumbled over her words, then defended herself like a bewildered child. It's not like that. I truly had no idea my sister was in such a prestigious position. Growing more indignant, the groom continued to scold Mary. Ignorance is no excuse. How can you speak so lightly and disrespectfully of your own sister? Your behavior is disgraceful. You've truly lost sight of what's valuable. Mary, desperately trying to explain, pleaded, wait a minute, listen, I have a good reason. However, the groom, without giving her a chance to explain, declared decisively, the marriage is off. I have no interest in hearing your excuses. Our engagement ends here. Shocked by his words, Mary collapsed on the spot, her complexion turning deathly pale. In a fit of anger, the groom stormed out of the wedding hall along with the other guests. As I was about to leave, I heard a desperate cry from my sister behind me. Please help me, Amy. Without being swayed by her cries, I confronted her with a stern tone. Help you. Why should I? The situation you're in is because of your own actions. Making jokes at others' expense and then playing the victim is pathetic. Mary, filled with confusion and anxiety, pleaded, Why are you using such harsh words? If I had known about your success as a lawyer, with a quiet yet firm attitude, I responded, why should I need to inform someone who has never contacted me about my profession? In fact, I was planning to end our relationship after this wedding. But now, seeing your unfortunate end, I am somewhat satisfied. You must be disappointed that your engagement to a doctor has been called off. Well, 
you'd better work hard to find your next prospect. With these words, I left the venue with dignity. From afar, I could hear the critical voices of my parents and other guests. Everything proceeded as expected, and Mary's marriage was no more. My parents, who had thought a secure future was assured through Mary's marriage to a doctor, expressed their anger toward her for the first time. Unable to withstand their anger, Mary sought help with a broken heart, but I ignored her pleas. I never answered her calls despite repeated attempts and cut off all contact with the family. I heard that Mary had quit her job and was now without employment, estranged from our parents, and spending her days shut in at home. As for me, I am very happy with both my work and private life, living peacefully without any big problems. Although my bond with my family hasn't been smooth, I am lucky to have a lot of support from people in my professional and daily life. This good environment isn't by chance, but because of my long-term hard work and effort. There were times when I faced tough challenges, but overcoming them made me who I am today. Looking back on my past struggles, I see their value. Now, I hope to keep living a fulfilling life at my own pace, setting realistic goals and keeping stress low.